before I even say anything, just listen. Isn't that amazing? I feel as though I'm not going to be able to talk loud enough that you can hear what's going on. We have a rose eagle owl sitting on a very low branch of a Tumbweti tre tree, which is actually quite amazing to see. Now, everything is alarming, from the drongos, of course, to the go-away birds. The hornbills are very unhappy. I got quite excited. I thought we were going to come across a leopard, but no even better in my opinion because it's an animal that we don't get to see very often and it was in the big jackalberry and now it's flown to a lower branch it's obviously trying to get away and by sitting in some of these uh, sort of low-lying branches there's lots of twigs and things in the way that could protect them from a drongo mobbing it but if what a beautiful bird I wanted you to get a good look first and then what we will try and do is I'll, I'll try and find a spot where we can reposition uh, I actually got a fright. I thought, oh no, it's going to fly away from us because it flew out of the jackalberry and actually landed in an even better spot. So it doesn't seem to be bothered by us. It seems to be preoccupied with something else. The birds seem to be settling down. Oh no, as I say that, they, they start again. They are not happy, and particularly the go-away birds are very unhappy. They actually seem as though they're, they're coming even closer. But isn't that beautiful? What a beautiful owl. The largest owl that we get in this area too. Oh, hello. If only it would just hop onto that branch a little bit higher, we'd get a perfect clear view of it. Amanda, you said that this is your favorite owl. There we go. I'm happy that we got to make your day. And now remember, like I said, we we're going to do some birding. I think that that's a fantastic bird to start off with. So there's a, there's a variety of birds. You can see the go away birds hopping about in the trees too very unhappy of course and this is my mom's favorite bird is the go away bird she would have been so excited to hear this i'll have to take a video of it later so i can show it to her now the reason why they are alarming is because well a rose eagle owl is indeed a predatory bird and they eat a variety of different things I don't know if they'd necessarily go after something as small as a go-away bird. I mean, they can take monkeys, they can take young warthogs, warthog piglets, they'll take herons, they'll take a number of, uh, of uh, different types of, of birds. Oh my goodness, oh, I thought I found a chameleon on my box, but I'll show you that a little bit later. It's a cool looking insect. It actually looks like a chameleon. Um, so that's why they're alarming. Sorry, I got so distracted there. Isn't that so cool? Seb, do you think we should try to get a better spot? Yeah. Seeing as though we've had a view of it, see if we can improve this. Let's quickly do this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and park a little bit. Actually, what about that, Seb? Is that a bit better? Yeah. We, we should have, oh, we might see its face now, yeah. So it's, it's just turned its head away from us again. I think the birds are getting bored now. I'm surprised that there's one that decided it was going, it, it sort of hopped on a lower branch, but it didn't do any mobbing. I mean, we've been lucky enough to see a drongo sitting on a brown snake eagle's head. I would have uh, liked to have added a Varose eagle owl to my list too. But there we go. There's a slight little gap. It's also got its feathers all fluffed up, whether it's a little bit on the chilly side today or it's actually just annoyed uh, that all the birds have given away its presence. As soon as one go-away bird starts singing, they all join in again. Look at those feathers. They are beautiful feathers. Actually, slightly mottled as well. That's a, a really interesting shot. I don't think I've ever seen a feather up close of a Varose eagle owl, but perhaps I'll come and check around here once this bird moves off. Uh, it's not uncommon as they sort of fly, especially when you're trying to get away from pesky drongos and go-away birds and hornbills. You know, you might bang your wing on a branch and lose a feather that way. And that would be a great feather to add to the collection. But I have not seen a Varose eagle owl in a very, very long time. See, it's looking up. Look at those beautiful pink eyelids too. Very powerful, sharp beak. We see they need that to tear into their prey. <laughs> I 
I d sorry, I, can you say that name again for me? Did you say D Chef? Did I make that up? Oh, I got it right. So, D Chef, you said before anybody asks, they eat fruit, nuts, and mice. <laughs> I like that. Um, you know what I'm surprised we don't see around here, which I saw a lot of down in the, the southern sector of the Sabi Sand, perhaps because there's not a lot of river systems around here, are cane rats. That would definitely be something that a Varroa's eagle owl would feast upon, is cane rats. It would be nice. Now, I've been fortunate enough to actually see a nesting pair down south again as well. I was really lucky. They, they would breed in the same spot every single year. It was quite amazing. And they were using a hummercorps nest. So, you know, the bird, the brown bird that has got a hammer-shaped sort of head to it. It's just its feathers that uh, make it look like that. They create some of the largest nests in the world. And owls typically use sort of platform nests or natural cavities. And in the case of the Varroa's eagle owl, they actually will nest on top of, um, well, of other birds' nests. And they seem to enjoy and, and often utilize the hummer corpse nest. And that was really nice to sort of watch. You just see their heads peering over uh, every now and then. Oh, it was so cool. And they're not exactly the prettiest looking chicks. Although not many birds are very cute uh, when they're sort of born and they're just getting their feathers. They're bizarre looking things. Right, I'm, I'm keen to reposition once more. What do you think, Seb? It's, it's actually looking for something on the ground. I don't know if it's maybe spotted a small little rodent or something like that. See that? See, it's focusing on the ground. Actually, wait, let's hold our position. Maybe it's going to jump around on the branch and dive straight into the ground. One day I did watch a spotted eagle owl. It was so sad. It was, um, I just sort of started guiding, and it was quite amazing to see uh, there was a little scrub here, and it was actually about this time, a little bit earlier, so it was slightly more darker, and I don't know where we were going, if we were going to do something first thing in the morning, a walk, or and we were all meeting up together. Well, anyways, I said, oh, look, a scrub here, and it was just grazing, and the next minute all we heard was, bah! And the spotted eagle owl flew past and snatched it and then flew away with it. <laughs> so that was one of the few kills I've seen with owls. Otherwise, I have also seen uh, the barred owlets and the pill spotted owlets catching big grasshoppers and crickets and things in the evenings. Okay, let's try this reposition. Let's see. I hope, though, if we reposition now that it's not going to fly because earlier the birds were distracting it. But we'll give it a bash anyway. It'll put these jackalberries to sort of seek shelter in from the sun. It's, I, mean, I think it's going to be warm. Clouds are here, but it's actually not cold today at all. It's just sitting in such an awkward spot, isn't it? Spot, isn't it? Yeah, because you, you're higher up. I'm just thinking, I know if I drive too close, I'm going to chase it away. Let's try if we go back here. Don't fly, birdie please. I just want to see, uh, we might, we'll reposition 150 times just to try and get the best spot. Mm, no, that's not going to work. To try and get them, so I'm trying to find a spot to actually Some of these you drive, some drive. So we're trying to do it as quietly as Okay. Let's on the road, we're gonna have to use another route. So we're gonna try and go up here. Watch the buffalo thorn on the left. Let's see. Please behave, Al. Thank you for cooperating. Oh, Wendy, you are hopeless. See, I can see it clearly, but I don't think it's going to be for you. Hang on, hang on, hang on, there we go. Have you got it? If I go a little bit further forward, I think it's going to be even better. Hang on. Look there, yeah, that's better. There we go, we've got a spot, now we can show you its beautiful face. Sorry, Alice, may I have that question again? I'm just so concentrating on trying to get a perfect view for all of you. There we go, look at that. Now it's a question from Michael, and you were wondering if these owls would ever predate smaller owl species. So, something that we've definitely learned, what I've learned watching these animals, 
is that what they tell you in the books is really just a guideline and, and we know that animals do whatever they want so I think yes that birds are opportunistic just as that's so cool just as of course uh, lions leopards hyenas all the rest of the predators are opportunistic so if there was an opportunity to catch an owl I don't think it's going to say no um, I don't think it will eat its own owl species I haven't read anything about them being sort of cannibalistic but I'm sure if there was a spotted eagle owl no spotted eagle owl and maybe a grass owl a barn owl that was just a sort of slightly smaller species because they do indeed eat other birds uh, I don't think that they would say no no, I haven't seen it personally, but remember we can't uh, sort of say no to these things because I think even watching fish eagles, example, a lot of you were surprised seeing a fish eagle eating another bird because, well, as the name suggests, they catch fish and they also scavenge. I've seen them scavenging on many antelope carcasses and, and, and well, carcasses of a variety. So they'll honestly eat whatever they can. If it means that they're going to survive another day out here in the wild, they will. But I suppose, Michael, it's something that we're just going to have to keep watching. And maybe we'll be fortunate enough to witness such unusual behavior. That's what I'd really love to do. Imagine being able to absorb your life and just live off of the land in the middle. Uh, s sort of out here in Africa and watching these animals every single day. Like we only spend a couple of hours out here, but imagine sleeping out in the bush every night. That would be really amazing. I think you would learn so much. That is a great shot. I hope you're all taking lots and lots and lots of screenshots. Now, Roshni, you're wondering if those pink eyelids are unique to the uh, Varose eagle owl. Yes, it is. I'm not aware of any other owl species uh, that I've seen um, and that have them. Is looking for something. I'm wondering if it's not going to try and catch one last meal before it gets uh, too sort of hot. It's very interested with something down on the ground. So there could be some rodents, uh, you know, sort of funneling through the grass. Again, even though they've got massive feet and big talons, which typically suggest the size of uh, the meal that they will catch, they will go after anything. Even so, if a little bush felt gerbil runs out, it will take it and it will eat it as a little snack. Remember, if it has got chicks somewhere, I'm actually not sure what time they nest, uh, what time of the year they nest. I'll have to have a look. Um, that uh, a little bushfowl gerbil would be a great meal for a young Varose eagle owl chick uh, and that would probably just swallow it whole in fact look at that isn't that amazing that's an Egyptian goose also just sort of honking in the distance so that's not the owl and then a couple of go away birds still making a noise I'm actually gonna jump onto my bird app while you look at that beautiful bird and I just want to quickly check what time of the year they uh, they sort of breed because I haven't got a clue I can't remember. I mean, that's the problem. Is we, we sometimes we go months and months without seeing certain birds, and then you forget all this type of stuff. Let's go. Uh, talking about nesting, laying dates. Anyways, we've got for Botswana, and we want South Africa. So anywhere between June and September. Okay. So this owl. I don't know if it's a male or female. I'll see if there's uh, any obvious uh, sexual dimorphism but um, this, this, this uh, owl could have chicks already or it could be in the process let's quickly check here if they give no they don't Oi. just sort of preening itself now no they don't uh, give any differences between male and female so there's obviously no coloration difference ask me who's a new viewer you're wondering if these are Rare birds, oh, sorry Alice, actually uh, between the go away birds shouting in my ears, I actually couldn't even hear that. Let me turn the volume up. So it's, how, okay, how do these rare birds find each other to mate? Very, uh, a good question. Um, probably through calling, so we normally hear their beautiful call, which I'll play for you a little bit later, I won't do it now. Um, it's a very sort of soft, it reminds me of very soft drums being played first thing in the morning is when you often hear it. Um, so by vocalization will probably be the most obvious, uh, the most obvious way. And that's how a lot of birds f uh, find one another, is just through their calls. Go away birds are actually the most bothered by this owl. So I wonder if they don't snatch up the go away bird every now and then. Though the, though the go away birds are actually, to me, are a lot smaller than what we see because they're so full of feathers. They've got such long tails. They're actually not a very big bird at all. They go quiet again, but they're all hovering above it. 
It's so funny because while the uh, go-away birds are on watch, the rest of the, the birds are all just sort of foraging around, not really too bothered at all. There they are, watching very carefully. And I can hear, who's that? It sounds like an African grey hornbill, so calling. <laughs> Stanley, 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 you say the go away birds sound a lot like a baby crocodile. <laughs> That's quite funny. I haven't actually heard anyone say that before, so there we go. What have I seen now, too? Hang on, why are you looking there? What is that? I don't know my binoculars. I'm going to quickly. It's a leopard. Is it? It's a Daker. A little. There's something with something sitting on the damn wall. I just saw big ears. Uh, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. It's behind all the trees. But, um. Oh, no, still there. It's just a little bit low on the branch. Uh, I think it'll be difficult for all of you to see, but there's a little daker that's obviously now responding to all these alarm calls. See here, they also hear the African grey hornbill, that high pitch. It's now also sitting up in the tree, joining in the party that's shouting at the birds. But that's sort of what happens every now and then is you'll hear all these birds alarming, and then you might find that the smaller antelope will go, What are you guys all talking about? What's there? Is it a leopard? You know, do I need to worry about it? Now, that fully grown dake is probably going to be a bit big for this for Rose Eagle Hour, but if it was a youngster, I wouldn't put it past me. There it goes, jumping up. Let's try and reposition again, Seb. Maybe if I go around, we'll get another view. But this, we're just surrounded by birds at the moment. Okay. What we'll do is uh, we'll try and reposition now and see if we can get a better view, but let's go across to Tristan and see if he's found that male leopard that he was tracking.